This training video will describe the basic components of the compound microscope and then give an overview on how to safely operate the microscope. In the lab, the microscope that you'll be using is the Motec BA310 model, which is a sturdy introductory level student microscope. But the skills that you develop can be applied to any type of microscope. Let's get started by learning about how the microscope works. At the back of the microscope, is the main plug-in, and within this housing, the halogen lamp is located. On the right side of the microscope is the main power switch, which turns the microscope on and off. There's also the brightness control knob, which controls the brightness of the halogen lamp located in the housing here. A lot of people think this is the best way to increase the intensity of light that's going to your eyes, but all it does is actually increase the intensity of the lamp, not the quality of the light. As your lamp ages, you need to increase this to get the same amount of light at the other end. The best setting for this is about halfway on the scale when you first turn on your microscope. The other buttons on this side are the fine focus knob, which is also on the left side, and the upper limit stopper, which when it's in the lock position, limits how high this stage will go up towards the objectives. Normally you don't need this, but if you sit down at the microscope and you realize it's not working properly, check to see that this isn't locked. If it is, just release it. You should be able to move it freely up and down. On the left side of the microscope is the coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. And these move the stage up and down and change the focal length between the objective and your slide. As they indicate, the coarse adjustment knob moves the slide up and down quite a bit, and when you get close to being in focus, use the fine focus knob for your final focusing. This tension knob controls how easy it is to move these two knobs here. Normally this is set so you don't have to change that. The other knob here is the condenser focus knob. The condenser is located underneath the stage, and this knob moves it up and down. This is part of the Kohler illumination process, which we're not going to be discussing in this video. So normally this will be set for you and you don't have to touch it. The light from the halogen lamp travels from the back of the microscope to the front of the microscope and through the field diaphragm located here. The ring around the diaphragm controls the diameter of the light that travels up into the objectives. From here, the light travels through the condenser. As we mentioned, this knob controls the height of the condenser, while these set screws control the centering of the condenser so that it lines up perfectly with the objective. This is the stage, and attached to the top of the stage is a specimen holder, which you can open up and place the slide in it so that it holds it on top of the stage. Make sure that the label is facing up and that the cover slip is facing up as well. You can move the specimen by these travel knobs. One will move it forward and backwards, and the other one will move it left and right. You want to move your specimen until it's in line with the light that's coming up through the condenser and into the objective. These are the objectives. In this microscope, there's a four times, 10 times, 40 times, and a 100 times objective. This is an oil objective. Because the focal distance between the slide and the objective is so small, you'll need a thin layer of oil in order to see it properly. You can always tell an oil objective because it will either say oil right on it, or it will have a black line that you can see here indicating that you need oil. There's also space for one more objective in here. When moving between objectives, you don't want to use your fingers to push on them because they may become misaligned so that the beam of light doesn't go directly up into the objective. You always want to rotate them using the revolving nose piece here. These objectives are also parfocal, so that when the four times is in focus with this slide, and you want to change to the next objective, the ten times, you don't have to lower the slide and then bring it back up into focus. As soon as you rotate the ten times objective into place, you just have to do some fine focusing, and you should have, see the image clearly. Same with rotating into the 40 times, it won't touch the slide or break it. And finally, if you go into 100 times, you have to add your layer of oil in order to see the image clearly. 
after the light has passed through the specimen on the slide and into the objective, it continues up and then out the eyepieces for viewing. There's two eyepieces, so you should be looking at the specimen with both eyes open and seeing a single image. Now you don't have to take these eyepieces off, but I just want to show you the diopter adjustment ring that's found on the outside of the eyepieces. It has a scale plus or minus with a zero in the middle. If you have 20-20 vision, you would set the dot at zero, and you should be able to see this, this specimen clearly. But if one of your eyes is weaker or stronger than the other, you can adjust it to compensate for that so that you can see the image clearly. The other scale that's important is the interpupillary distance scale, which is a scale from 55 to 75. And as the name indicates, that's the distance between your pupils. You can adjust the eyepieces until you're comfortable seeing a single image. And then make note of this number, because the next time you sit down, it'll be quicker for you to set up the microscope to see the image. When you first sit down at the microscope bench, you want to make sure that you adjust your seat height for comfortable viewing. Ideally, your head should come forward and both eyes rest on the eyepieces comfortably without moving your shoulders up or down. You could be sitting at the microscope for a while, looking at different specimens, taking notes, or drawing objects that you see, so make sure that you're comfortable. When you're ready to view your slide, start by lowering the stage using the course adjustment to the lower limit. Use the revolving nose piece to rotate the objective that you want into place. In this case, we use the 40 times objective. While you're looking at the objective and the slide, raise the stage so that the glass slide is as close as possible to the objective, but not touching it. You want to do that while you're looking at it here and not through the eyepieces, because you won't be able to tell how close the slide is getting to the objective and you could end up cracking the slide or worse, scratching the lens on the objective. Once you have the slide as close as possible, you can look down the eyepieces and lower the stage until the specimen comes into focus. Because these objectives are parfocal, we want to change to the next higher power, we don't have to lower the stage. Just rotate the next objective into place, do a bit of fine focusing and carry on. With my right hand, I'm going to use the travel knobs to move the specimen around left and right, forward and back. With my left hand, I'm going to keep it on the fine focus to get the clearest picture of my specimen. After watching this video, you probably won't remember what all the different parts of the microscope are for, which is why it's important to spend time learning about the microscope. When you get to the lab, if you have any questions, ask for help. And remember, every experiment is an opportunity to learn and develop skills no matter the outcome.